Hey guys, so the next thing we're looking at is surface area and volume of solids. Um, so we're going to start with what are called rectangular prisms. Um, one of the biggest problems I find with math is the terminology. Alright, so it took me the longest time to realize when I say it's rectangular prism, it's literally like a cube but not a perfect square. So mathematics, the real world we call everything kind of cubes or solids. Uh, mathematicians only call things a cube if they're exactly square on all sides. Everything else is called a rectangular prism. Now the problem with that is when we think of prisms, we think of triangles. Uh, we don't think of squares. So just remember when I say the word prism, I mean in math we mean solid. Okay, um, so rectangular prism is really just a solid rectangle shaped block. Okay, we most of us would call it a block. Okay, um, but in math it's got a very special shape name. So because mathematicians feel it necessary to name things more difficultly than normal. So in the real world, as I said, a prism is usually a triangle, but don't get confused, okay? Prism does not mean triangle in math. So a rectangular prism basically is an object that has a, a length and a width, but it also has a height. So for example, one of the ways it's easier to view it is think of it as cubes. So you can basically count across, count up. Um, one of the tricks we use in math is what we call units. And a unit cube is basically just a one by one by one cube. Why is that useful? Well, because one times one stays as one, your length, width, and height are one. Your area, length times width, is still one, but it'd be one squared. And your volume would actually be one cubed because it would be one times one times one. So the nice thing about that is if I want to find area, I could just count the number of squares and that would tell me the area of that face. If I want to know the volume, I could just count all the squares that make it up and that would give me the volume. If I want to know the length, just one, two, three, four, the height, one, two, three. So it just makes it easier to see if we talk about what's called a unit cube. A unit cube just basically means it's got one which means that by counting it, we can actually solve for everything we need to know. So let's look at what surface area is. The surface area is the amount of area it takes to completely cover the prism. So it would be the area of each face. So think of it as actually unwrapping, okay? If we unwrap the entire object, right, you'd get a front, but you'd also get a back that's the same size. You'd have a bottom, and you'd have a top that is the same size, and then you'd have two sides that are the same size. So you need to find out what is the area of this sheet of paper that you would need to actually fully wrap this object. That's what the surface area is. So it's actually easier to find with cubes. So you need to find the area of each face and then double each face because each face is gonna have another one that's the same, right? The top is gonna be the same as the bottom, the front is gonna be the same as the back, the right is gonna be the same as the left. So if I draw you an object like this, right, if we look at our front, it's one, two, three by four, so three, six, nine, twelve. Twelve yards is our front, times two is twenty-four, because there's a front and a back. So I need the same space to cover the front and the back. The left is two by four, so two, four, six, eight, times two would be 16. The top is 6. So 2 times top and bottom will be the same, so it will be 12. Then we add them all together, and that gives you your surface area. So the way you find it is find the area of each of these, multiply them by 2, and then add it all together. So this would have an area of 52 yards. By the way, don't worry about this square. The square just means area that you've multiplied it together, okay? Because you multiply yard by yard, you get yard squared. Same with yard cube. You don't need to square anything. Just ignore that, okay? Don't, don't worry about, you don't need to do anything with the number because of the square. That just tells you it's an area. All right, volume is how much space does an object contain? So when we look at it, 
If you're a visual person, it's usually easy to think of each level. Think of how many cubes each level has, and then how many levels are there. So the trick is to find the number, the volume of one layer, then you increase it by the number of layers. So for example, the bottom of this is two by three, which means there would be six cubes. There are four levels, so it would be six times four, so six, 12, 18, 24. There would be 24 total units of volume. So for an actual question, let's take a look at this one, right? It's four centimeters by three centimeters by five centimeters. So the bottom is just four by three. So it's four, eight, 12. And then you've got one, two, three, four, five of them. So it's 12 times five, which is 60. And my units are centimeters. So volume would just be centimeters cubed. Remember again, you don't need to square anything. That's just what the unit is for volume. So that's how we find look at sort of a solid object. Remember, a rectangular prism is not a triangle. It's just a solid object that's a rectangle. So that's going to be partly your main problem. Other than that, the actual work isn't too hard. You figure out one level, multiply it by the number of levels. Or for area, you figure out one face, double it to figure out the other face, double it, figure out the other face, double it, add them all together. All right, so the worksheets for this are practicing figuring out volume and surface area. Then what we're going to do tomorrow, or sorry, on Wednesday, is we're going to look at how do we make this into an equation that we can actually use to solve without having to count squares. All right. Good work. Good luck. Have a good one.